strong leader in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Klobuchar, and uh, really appreciate your leadership, uh, most especially on the Competition and Antitrust Law Enforcement Reform Act, which I am proud to co-sponsor, and uh, other measures in this subcommittee and our full committee. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned about barriers to private enforcement. I'm a former antitrust enforcer as state attorney general, but I know very well the importance of private attorneys general in enforcing these laws, not just for their own well-being, but for other consumers as well. And I think both of our key antitrust laws, the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act, empowered consumers, workers, and small businesses to seek recourse for abuses of monopoly power. But so often, uh, these uh, harmed businesses and consumers face really Herculean obstacles to even getting a day in court. That's the reason that I've sponsored the FAIR Act, which would eliminate forced arbitration. And it's also the reason why I think uh, the limitations to private enforcement in the indirect purchaser rule has to be reformed. It was established by the Supreme Court in two decisions, Illinois Brick and Hanover Shoe, as you well know. And uh, Macon Delrahim urged Congress to override the decisions that, in his words, quote, work together to confuse antitrust damages doctrine and to handcuff most victims of anti-competitive conduct with no path for recovery while providing other plaintiffs with an unfair windfall. Uh, his speech actually echoed concerns that were raised by Justice Kavanaugh in the court's opinion in uh, Apple v. Pepper when he expressed set skepticism about too rigid application of the indirect purchase rule. So there are reforms that can increase the enforceability of these rules that I hope our subcommittee will examine, including the FAIR Act. But uh, I want to focus first on interoperability requirements. All of you know how, in effect, Google and Facebook have dug moats around their very formidable castles, trapping users from leaving the network effects of their products and systems can have devastating effects on competition. And my view is we need interoperability and portability requirements to break down the walls that they have established. And last Congress, I introduced the Access Act, which would require large tech companies like Facebook and Google to offer interoperable access for competition and consumers. I don't need to tell anybody on this panel, you were experts, as to why this act could be very, very helpful to achieving lower switching costs and barriers to competition. In short, it would help consumers break up with big tech. Not necessarily break up big tech, but engender innovation and competition by enabling consumers to break up with these marriages that may inhibit competition. So let me ask all of you, do you agree that interoperability and data portability requirements would help foster startups and competitors that could compete on pro-consumer terms with big tech. And I would appreciate, obviously, your supporting the Access Act in that regard. I'll begin with whoever would like to go first. So we definitely do support interoperability. We think it's essential in a marketplace like tech platforms that are where the dominance is so entrenched that um, really that's going to be the only opportunity in the near term for 
uh, consumers to get a choice is to go with some new upstart alternative that doesn't require them to give up all of their Facebook friends or all of their songs that they've collected or whatever it may be. Uh, those need to be in the control of the consumer, not the platform. Uh, we also think it's important that in whatever wider access is given, that uh, focus be kept on uh, the consumer being uh, aware of and um, in charge of what happens to their data and their information. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I would say it, it depends on the details. I, I think this is potentially a very pro-consumer option. Um, first, I, I think we need to separate, you know, what is portability versus interoperability because the kind of concerns and considerations there are a bit different. Um, it comes down to, you know, implementation, um, how broad of a mandate it is, how well it fits with that technology, and also security. Um, I, I think that's a really big consideration, too, is that, you know, this is something that would have to be implemented very smartly, especially when it comes to portability, because that could come with some security risks. So um, I, I think it's definitely worth exploring, but um, needs to, you know, the devils are in the details sometimes. You endorse it in principle, and you want to see the details. Yes, I, I endorse, um, you know, exploring that, so yes. Thank you. Senator, if I could weigh in. I, I don't know yes, if someone else thank you. Not. Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, so I wanted to say, you know, that's, I think, an extremely insightful analysis of both the problems that we have with some of these tech platforms and how we might approach a kind of light touch regulation to improve competition in the sector. And I would just echo, I, I know you're aware of it, the success that we had in telecommunications with such an approach. First, uh, with uh, increasing competition in long distance service, and then increasing competition in, in mobile telephony by exactly that kind of insistence on number portability and effectively uh, interoperability of the, of the system. So I, I think antitrust isn't going to reach some of the problems that we have with these large technology platforms. Competition's gonna have a tough time if we can't find a way to, to um, make entrance more viable. And that type of approach might be, as it's you know, being pursued in, in the UK and in Europe, might be um, a very powerful way to improve competition. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I just, um, our organization you know, strongly supports interoperability requirements, but we, with a caveat, which is that we um, have to understand that those alone will definitely not solve the power problems and that uh, we have to be focused uh, in integrating uh, interoperability requirements with uh, anti-discrimination rules and also with ensuring that we're getting the proper structure. Actually, you know, uh, um, uh, Nancy Rose just mentioned uh, the AT&T case and actually part of what was happening was a restructuring of AT&T. So it's like it has, these things have to be uh, 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 pursued as a, as a unit. That's a good point. I wasn't suggesting that the Access Act be the exclusive reform that we undertake, but I, I take your point. Yeah. Thank you. Some people do, that's why. So. Thanks for the question, Senator. I, I think that the analog has been made that, um, or the analogy has been made to the uh, telephone industry and the portability of phone numbers, and I think that was a um, uh, uh, policy that was supported under the Bush administration and has uh, pro-consumer benefits. Um, and I think that these issues are equally um, capable uh, of, in need of study. I think it's likely that these are much more complex. And I think as others have said, the devil's in the details, um, so to speak, uh, because of that complexity. I don't dispute that it is complex or it can be made complex. But the principle is very simple, and as all of you know, it has worked, as you say, in telecommunications. So uh, I hope we can continue to get the benefit of your insight and advice. Thank you all. Thanks. Very good. Thank you very much, Senator Blumenthal. I also want to note we were joined by Senator Blackburn, who has an interest in this issue, which I appreciate. And uh, um, as she's been online, you can't always see everyone, but I want to thank her for her participation. Um, and I'm going to turn over to Senator Lee to ask a few more questions. We have a vote coming up, so he and I will close with some questions. Senator Lee. Thanks so much.